Well, happy Tuesday, everyone, and welcome back to this week's Table Talk. It is so good to be with you, and it's so good to be at the table with Kelly Sweet today. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this. Uh, Kelly, you and your husband, Eric, Mm -hmm. have been members and attendee here at River Oaks now for... About, four? Yeah, close to four. About three and a half years we were members and then visited prior to that. So. Yeah, and you yeah. guys um, just jumping in. You're just uh, serving hearts. I know we'll see you in Noah's Ark. Yes. And now we'll yep. see you in Kids Rock. Yep. <laughs> and then back in Noah's Ark. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. Uh, just staying busy. You've got three yes. little ones. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Shepherd. Yeah. Shep. Shep. Mm-hmm. Shep. Hey, Shep. Shep. And yep. Grace. Grace and Sam. Grace. Good to see you. <laughs> and then yeah. Sam. Sam yeah. will have to watch this in a few years. I'm yeah. Sure, so yeah. A little yeah. one. And uh, you know, the other uh, thing, David, um, well, welcome, David, to the table, too. Good to be here. Good to <laughs> Thank be here. Thank you for your message, Sunday. Uh, really helpful. Yeah. and look forward to con- uh, conversing about it. But um, David, uh, Kelly and Natalie and Paige Sessions yes. this past fall, early mm-hmm. fall, late yeah. summer, yeah. attended a um, really unique study of uh, conference yes Bible yeah. conference it was a lifeway conference um okay. women's conference at southeastern baptist um mm-hmm. in wake forest and um jen wilkin was the keynote speaker yeah. and so anybody in the wow tuesday study yeah. we i think we're on our fourth study of hers in a yeah. row now so we're big fans um so we couldn't kind of pass up that opportunity to see her but it she is um she's very passionate about biblical literacy yes and um the conference really was kind of getting at for women you know what is your why why you know are you here why are you in women's ministry Mm -hmm. and um really making sure that you know women know they have a vital place within the church so a role to serve oh that's great well i'm hopeful that uh they'll be able to you know even more join maybe this coming year at other similar conferences like that i uh, i saw some of the breakout sessions and oh i was jealous david (laughs) (laughs) oh you know the various genres of scripture and the narrative of the old testament and just really deep uh biblical scholar work and they went deep uh, and it was it was fascinating yeah well good well thank you Thank you for coming back and sharing that with so many, um, I know, with WOW and other studies. So, well, Mm -hmm. we are here at the table, and uh, we are in Unit 7 of the final section of Luke. So we're moving toward the end of the Gospel of Luke. And this week we're at a a betrayal and a denial. Our small groups will look at both. But, uh, David, the sermon uh, this past Sunday was really on Peter's denial. Mm -hmm. Right. And right. so um, as we think about that, let's go ahead and look at the Scripture. Kelly, would you mind reading that Luke chapter 22, uh, verses 31 and 34? And then we may also see the completion of that in 54 through 62. So maybe just read both of those sections. Okay. That would be sure. great. Um, Simon, Simon, look out. Satan has asked to sift you like wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail. And you, when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. Lord, he told him, I am ready to go with you both to prison and to death. I tell you, Peter, he said, the rooster will not crow today until you deny three times that you know me. Okay, so that's a, sort of the, the beginning of this right. uh, pericope, right. I guess. And uh, we'll come back to discussing it. But Kelly, why don't you move forward then to the reality of, of the, uh, the outcome okay. of that? At 54. At 54, yeah. Sure. They seized him, led him away, and brought him into the high priest's house. Meanwhile, Peter was following at a distance. They lit a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, and Peter sat among them. When a servant saw him sitting in the light and looked closely at him, she said, This man was with him too, but he denied it. Woman, I don't know him. After a little while, someone else saw him and said, You're one of them too. Man, I am not, Peter said. About an hour later, another kept insisting, This man was certainly with him, since he's also a Galilean. But Peter said, man, I don't know what you're talking about. Immediately, while he was still speaking, a rooster crowed. Then the Lord turned and looked at Peter. So Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him, before the rooster crows today, you will deny me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. Oh, wow. So much there. Mm -hmm. Uh, Thank you, Kelly. Um, Well, let me ask you first. Uh, Was there anything 
from, from that text that strikes you, that maybe resonates with you, that uh, has always, or maybe new insight, or what do you Yeah, um, so one thing that was kind of, in reading this and looking at different translations, um, I thought this was really, really interesting that this first part here um, in 31 through 34, uh, Satan has asked to sift you like wheat. The you, I think in Greek, is actually plural. So uh, it was sift you all yes. or sift each of you, which I'm mm-hmm. assuming maybe is meaning mm-hmm. to all the disciples. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So then just kind of that little nuance, though, that then Jesus is specifically then praying for Peter. Yeah. Um, you know, but I have prayed for you, mm-hmm. Simon Peter, that mm. your faith may not fail. So I thought that was just like a really interesting yeah. nuance there that, you know, yeah. it, it, you're talking about all, but I think we already see that Jesus sees something different or recognizes mm-hmm. something different yeah. in Peter, you know, that we'll see later, obviously, he comes right, back to, right. to tell that's him great. to... That's great. Oh, that's great, Kelly. Mm-hmm. And and really, David, do we see this because it comes on the heels of this sort of debate that the, 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 the plural yous are having in that moment of who's the who's greatest? The, who's to be regarded as the greatest. Perhaps yeah. so. Yeah. I mean, perhaps it follows there for a reason. Yeah. Um, that That's part of the sifting is sort of this comparative Christianity, right, mm-hmm. that, that we mm-hmm. have. And, and that's really when, uh, when Satan can get at us. Um, but then he, he, then he moves that direction to Peter. Do you think Peter was involved in that conversation? I would think so. Yeah. <laughs> I would think so. <laughs> From what we know of Peter, he, he would, yeah he, yeah, he would seem to to be one like that. But um, what else do you think, Jesus, uh, other than just knowing, um, why why do you think Peter specifically was the one that of the one that we we think counter, counterintuitively would be the one not to deny Christ, but he ends up doing it. What does that show us, maybe, or what can we learn from it? Well, he does seem somewhat brash and yeah. bold, mm-hmm. and um, and yet he would be timid enough to deny Jesus, even when only confronted initially by a, a servant girl. Yeah, um, just reminds us that pride precedes a fall. Yeah, you know, as Paul said, if anyone think he stands, let him take heed lest he fall. Mm-hmm. And um, so perhaps Jesus is chipping away at some of that pride at this point. Yeah, yeah, and and the application of that for us. Do you see anything, Kelly, for that? Or, uh... um, well, I mean, I think we we have to be on our guard. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, it kind of when I read this, you know, I think like we're we're not so unlike Peter, you know. Yeah. And then I kind of take this back to Judas and some parallels there, you know, with yeah. betrayal and mm-hmm. denial. You know, it's. Um, you can. I think it's easy to look at Peter and think like I would never do that, but yeah. you don't know in a moment of weakness, you know mm-hmm. what right. what you're going to do. But um, yeah, I think just just being able to you know stand stand yeah. guard. Yeah, and then to be used in the way that he would be used, uh, I almost got a sense in hearing some of what you how you described it, David, that he had fallen. I mean, to the point of denying Christ, and but then raised, restored. Uh, by Jesus, by God, to do some of the mightiest of, of works for the kingdom. And just that, that encouragement. And so I gather that was quite a uh, humiliation, uh, a necessary humiliation, mm-hmm. and that um, there might be some of that in our own life that um, we might try to resist, but if we would maybe just back off of it and say, you know, Lord, I might need that. You know, maybe this is helpful for me in this moment. Um, yeah, I, I just, uh, and, and Kelly, I think you were right too, because we tend to sort of point fingers at Peter at this moment too. Mm-hmm. And I think if, if, if we're pointing fingers at Peter, then we're probably in the same place Peter was in yeah. mm-hmm. prior to this, mm-hmm. right? right? Well, this could, I would never deny you, Christ. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and he does. Um, what does this tell us it, just in the general theme of restoration though? Um, is there anything that we can encourage someone else with out of this passage uh, that might be doubting that, doubting their place, doubting maybe their past? Or I think it's a hopeful message. Yeah. I mean, if we know that that Jesus is going to restore Peter in this way, and there's other examples in the Bible, you know, yeah. other other people who've fallen and and 
you know, have been restored yeah. or, you know, you look at like Saul to Paul, you know, something mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. And then, you mm-hmm. know, the, the fruit that's spared there. I mean, I think we can't stay in this, you know, place of, yeah. of denial, or right. I think you had that's said right. on Sunday, you know, staying in brokenness. Right. Um, hmm. So I think, I don't know, I think to me, yeah. it's hopeful that, yeah. you know, as long as we're willing to, to repent and, yes. and do the work also that, that, yeah, you know, absolutely. Jesus will restore us. Oh, that's great. Yeah. David, anything else you would add to that? Yeah, I think it's interesting that Jesus, even when he predicts the denial, also predicts the restoration. Because he says, and when you have turned again, Mm -hmm. strengthen your brothers. So he anticipates the turning again, Mm. the repentance, the brokenness, the contriteness that will come in the restoration and uh, future ministry. Strengthen your brothers. Mm -hmm. You know, when we've been through a, a fall or something that's humbling or humiliating even, um, yeah. if we will respond appropriately in humility and receive the Lord's restoring yeah. grace, it often becomes an occasion for ministry for us. Yeah. I, I, it's, it reminds me of the, the <coughs> passage as well on um, we, we grieve in order that we may help others in mm-hmm. their grieving. Mm-hmm. And, and yeah. this is a very similar, uh, right. which to me, sort of that step further is um, how willing are we to offer that amount of grace and restoration to someone who has de- denied, you know, not denied us, but we've lost trust in mm-hmm. or has lost our trust uh, and truly repents? Are we willing to say, okay, um, I trust you again. Yeah. I, I allow you, uh, you know, to, um, uh, you know, to be to be part of my confidence again and uh, uh, enable them um, as Jesus would do with Peter. Yeah, yeah that's I, hard. Yeah. That's hard. I think in um, in the Wow study we're doing about the Beatitudes, you know, it, it's kind of all talking about going that extra mile for somebody and your mm. heart motives and and treating others, you know, not just as you want to be treated, but beyond that and better than that. And I think that that can be a really, you know, if we're just our flesh, our fleshy selves, you know, that's kind of, we don't like that. (laughs) Yeah. You know, in our flesh, we say, I'll forgive you, but I'll never forget. Mm-hmm. And, and Jesus says, I'll forgive you and, and I'll forget and then I'll allow you to do even more for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so yeah. there's a, there's an uh, amazing. Man, amazing amount of, of grace, I think, that's, that's offered there. Uh, and the last thing I'd mention about this is I do find this interesting from the restoration standpoint. A lot of time we talk about um, the hopefulness that comes with someone who's had um, maybe a, uh, a very difficult past before coming to know Christ. And we sort of say to that person, well, uh, you know, you, you, can, you can turn from that past and never have to revisit it. Uh, you know, Jesus has thrown it as far as the east is from the west. And it's sort of, okay, now I've turned to Christ, and yeah, my past is my past. This is after, I believe, Peter would say he was a follower of Jesus, that right. he falls. Right. And um, sometimes we don't give that same hopeful message to those who fall as believers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think that's Good important. Good point. Yeah. I think um, we want to condemn them a little yes. bit more maybe because yeah. we think they should, or they're held to a yeah. different yeah. standard or a higher standard. Should have yeah. known better. Yeah. 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 I mean, again, if anyone should have known better and yet Jesus says, I know your heart, yeah. I know your heart and I know your repentance. Um, and now go forward. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, wow. Okay. So yeah. what a, what a beautiful passage. Um, and, and so this was the text of, of Sunday sermon, but again, David, what we do to our small groups all the time, <laughs> we, we give you a whole lot more to think about this week, and I'm just, we just want to touch on those briefly. And one of the passages I think that might come up in small group that we'll touch on is that uh, verses 35 through 38. Uh, we may tend to sort of just move right past it, but there's sort of a difficult question there uh, mm-hmm. that might be good for us to understand. Would you read that, and then let's talk about sure. that. 35 through 38 of chapter 22. And he said to them, When I sent you out with no money bag or knapsack or sandals, did you lack anything? They said, Nothing. He said to them, But now let the one who has a money bag take it, and likewise a knapsack, and let the one who has no sword sell his cloak and buy one. For I tell you that this scripture must be fulfilled in me, and he was numbered with the transgressors. For what is written about me has its fulfillment. And they said, look, Lord, here are two swords. And he said to them, it is enough. All right. So the message is grab your sword. Let's go. Uh, 
What is the message there? I mean, it seems like he's trying to prepare them. I mean, and I will say, you know, I'm not yeah. entirely sure, but it, you know, and even whether this is literal or figurative okay. with, you know, the items that he's he's talking to them about, but it seems like maybe in some veiled language that he knows what's in store for them after he's gone yeah. and is trying to, you know, tell them, like, you didn't need this before when you had me. Okay. But... I don't know. You, there's a different level of preparedness, maybe that. Uh, yeah, I think you're on. So. I think you're right in there, Kelly. David, anything? Well, I think Kelly's to? right. I think you know. Initially, Jesus was showing them how he could just provide everything yeah. they needed. You don't even need to take this out, teaching them to trust him. But now he's saying, you know, do the natural preparation. Take the mm-hmm. sandals, the knapsack, um, and. Probably, I, I don't know this, but probably the swords, just because that was a part of normal mm-hmm. uh, activity. You know, you travel, you know, wild animals, whatever, mm-hmm. you camp it out. Yeah. Um, I, I don't think he was saying take the swords because now it's all about physical right. warfare. Uh-huh. I don't think right. that's what he was saying. Yeah. And I, that's probably why when they said, Lord, here are two swords, he said it's enough. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not majoring on the swords. <laughs> um, so that's, that's I, a good way of saying it. Yeah, I don't know, but it yeah, it kind of seems that way. Yeah, I think I think you're right. You know, there at the end, even he's he's saying, "Wait, this is this isn't a military operation." <laughs> yeah, just, yeah. Uh, let's not get carried yeah. away. Yeah, and you know, and I do I do think there's an element of figurative expression in this. Uh, in other words, uh, you know, you know, get, you got your backpack, you know, take your toothbrush, you know, it's not an out and back like it was when I sent you in Luke nine and Luke right, ten, right. Um, uh, and you need you need to you know work for your support. You don't know, don't just not everyone's going to take care of you, like you said. So mm-hmm. get your normal things for travel and be sent, mm-hmm. uh, right. and you're going to be going. Right. Uh, and and as he would say, Matthew, um, I think it's 25, 24, 25, where he says, and they won't always have me with them. Um, that's sort of, it feels like he's saying that here, you know, you, you, I've told you, you won't always, I won't always be with you. Mm-hmm. And so, and, and the swords, I do think that's important because that word is, um, it's really the dagger. I think it's a word for one of those short daggers they had. And uh, that was protection. That was, you know, cutting up the apple, you know, the, I, I don't know, I guess there's Palestinian apple trees. <laughs> there has to be, right? Or some, some kind of uh, fruit or, you know, just the daily sort of, you know, here's your pocket knife. Uh, take that. Take your knapsack. Take your clothes. Take your, some food, and and um, you're 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 gonna go on without me now. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that should help, yeah. right? Is there anything else that we would be questioning there, or uh, be puzzling if if I'm a, a small group uh, on that on the particularly the sword piece, right? That's uh, um, and then of course then we go to the garden, right? And mm-hmm. what does Peter do? He's going to be bold now. He takes that sword (laughs) out, right? Yeah, yeah. (laughs) He he cuts at the ear of the guy. So, uh, again, you say, no, enough with the sword, (laughs) Peter. Enough. It's like I regret Uh, even saying it. That's right. I should have said no sword. (laughs) Um, (laughs) I should have stuck to the toothbrush. Um, But so, all right. So, and and then, yeah, so the the rest Mm -hmm. of this chapter that would be in Unit 7 of the small group guide uh, guide is that we do go to uh, the Mount of Olives, uh, there'd be this time of prayer, and then we would see the uh, the betrayal. Uh, Judas and the men and soldiers would come up and arrest Jesus, and and uh, move him forward. I, I think the one thing out of that, though, we could dig into it, you know, for another half hour. I know, uh, is the uh, I, I love when Jesus says, "Well, wait, all this time you saw me in the temple and broad daylight, and you you wait till now mm-hmm. under cover of darkness to come." What do I have clubs and you know mm-hmm. you know or, or, what are we a mob here? Um, you always say, David, about um, session meetings. Nothing good happens <laughs> after nine o'clock. Is that right? <laughs> it's it's incentive to end by nine. O'clock. Okay. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. My dad used to tell me when I was growing up, one to stay late. Nothing good happens after midnight or, mm-hmm. or eleven o'clock or mm-hmm. something like that. Yep. We just the older you get, you back it up. A yes, I think my girl's here at ten o'clock. Is that? <laughs> You don't want to be in a business meeting after nine o'clock. Yes, that's right. <laughs> yeah, but there's something about darkness that um, yeah. there's there's a um, a boldness for for more wickedness as well, yeah. and uh, and of course here that was they were afraid of the people. Mm-hmm. Right? You know, Jesus had already said this before that you know, uh, well they well when they question him, right? Well, if I answer if the answer is this way, then all the people are going to be mad at us. So, um, yeah. anything in the rest of that passage, Kelly, that. Um, 
as as you would have looked through it. And uh, again, I know it wasn't really with the the sermon, but um. Um, no, I mean I think that there's so much here. I think you know, and yeah, then even talking about yeah. like the Mount of Olives, you know, there's just there's so much to get into, you know. And I think I'm always struck when I read this part, just um, really getting at like Jesus's humanity, that yeah. side, you know. And there's just um, yeah, it's emotional. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, take this cup from me take if it this, be your will. And, yeah, you're not, um, you know, looking at just some superhero in a cave. You know, it's you see mm-hmm. that real that that human side of him. And well, well, that's great. Well, thank mm-hmm. you. So hope hopefully that helps with our passage this week, yeah. both from the sermon and the small group. Lastly, our essential moment uh, for table talk this week. Uh, the understanding this week, I felt like as we looked at this passage, is just really the idea of who is Satan. Uh, we saw Satan enter Judas. We saw that Satan looks to sift, and he he tempted Peter. Um, and so, w- when we say that Satan and the understanding of who Satan is is a fundamental, foundational truth, I say that with a backdrop that you know I think recent polls suggest that um, even among those who profess to believe Christians, mm-hmm. um, there's a, it's a minority who actually believe that the reality of Satan uh, that there exists. Satan uh, and spiritual warfare and those sort of things. And so um, I, I do think that's essential because Jesus certainly believed in Satan, yeah. Uh, yeah. confronted, uh, had interactions, mm-hmm. and has spoken. His word is um, filled with uh, the forces of evil um, as led by Satan uh, mm-hmm. against the forces of God. Um, how do you, I guess, so when we talk about this, someone says, well, you know, I don't really know much about Scripture Bibles. Um, I hear about Satan. I see him. He's sort of a cartoon with horns. And uh, we have, um, and I'm not making a statement here, but we do have college basketball teams that are mascotted uh, with similar characters. Um, that way for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it, it, he seems pretty lovable to me. How do we get back to the reality of who Satan is? What do you tell them? Well, I mean, I I don't know even personally. You know, I know that the Bible says that I think he was a fallen angel. Right. Um, you know, but so I don't know. Do do you think of him as an angel oh. or a spirit or something? You know, certainly not like this mm-hmm. caricature. Yeah. Um but, you know, I think I go back to, like, Genesis, where you even have God talking yeah. to Satan after the fall, mm. you know, the, he will you, crush your yeah, head or he yeah. will, you know, strike your head yeah. and, you know, but you will bruise his heel or something like that. You know, so it's, we have God acknowledging yeah. Satan, you know, so I think it's just in talking to somebody who may not believe, like, well, we have to go back to the Bible. Right. And, and, you know, we see it very yeah. evident in here. That, well, that's great. That's good. Mm-hmm. David, how do you, how do you answer well, that? Well, I would say, first of all, it's important to know uh, what he's not, who he's not. He is not God's equal opposite. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He's a created being, an angelic being. There are two Old Testament passages that are kind of veiled descriptions. I think one is yeah. Isaiah 14 and the other Ezekiel 28 that mm-hmm. imply he was created there in the beginning um, a ruling angel of some type. <clears throat> Maybe the best description I can think of in the New Testament is in Revelation chapter 12, where he's called the he's the dragon, but he's also the ancient serpent from the Garden of Eden. Mm-hmm. He's the devil. He's Satan. Yeah. He's the accuser of the brethren, and um, he's all of those things. And it, there does seem to be a hierarchy in his kingdom of. Uh, Paul describes in Ephesians chapter 6 of principalities, powers, master rulers of the present darkness, Mm. spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. So um, he has great power. He's called the little G, God of this Mm. world. He's called little P, prince of the power of the air. He has power. But in Christ, we are more than conquerors. Mm -hmm. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. We are secure. We have nothing to fear from yeah. him mm-hmm. unless we're standing on our own in ourselves. Then there's much to fear, but yeah. then we're, we're in Christ. So created being, he'll one day be destroyed and put under the feet of Christ, which means under the feet of the body of Christ, the church. Yeah. So. 
Wow, that's really good. Yeah. <laughs> that's great, Dave. So I, I just when when you mentioned a couple of those, and I just I do like in Ezekiel twenty eight sixteen where um, Ezekiel is speaking to the King of Tyre, but it, and, and sort of then through him as if he is being influenced. Uh, by Satan. Right. And so of Satan, he says, you know, you were the signet of perfection. You were full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden. Every precious stone uh, was there. And he goes on to say, on that day, they're created, they're prepared. You were an anointed guardian cherub. So yeah. that's where we kind of get the mm-hmm. fallen uh, angel aspect. I placed you, you were on the holy mountain. Uh, you were blameless. And in the abundance of your trade, you were filled with violence in your midst and you sinned. So I cast you as a profane thing from the mountain of God and destroyed you. And so there's an element of sort of that, um, that interaction with God or, or what, mm-hmm. what happened mm-hmm. out, of, out of that pride. Uh, and then, uh, David, as you said, I like the verse in, uh, I think it's First John 3, 8, uh, where almost like the mission of Jesus again, you know, in mm-hmm. Luke it says, came to seek and to save. Uh, but John says that um, he's talking about those who sin. He says, whoever makes a practice of sinning, willful sin, disobedience, is of the devil. For the devil has been sinning from the, from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. Right. And that's right. really deep. I mean, that's yeah. really profound right there. Yeah. Right, from the yeah. beginning, and we see what happened with sin, and that was uh, attributed to the devil. Yeah. And the reason that Jesus even appeared incarnate, uh, came to this earth, died mm-hmm. for us, mm-hmm. was to destroy what he did. Yeah. Oh, that's good. That's that's really good, um, and so there is greater power uh, in yes. in Jesus. Um, that Greek, let's call Greek too. I, this is great. Really Greek here. Uh, <laughs> Diablos uh, for Satan. The word for mm-hmm. Satan is Diablos in Greek, and and it's it's sort of this two part meaning of slanderer and separator. And the 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 aspect of that is that it was you know we think of the garden. It was the slander of God that created the separation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. between us and God. But that's, mm-hmm. what, that's what the devil attempts to do, right? That right. deceit, slandering, uh, and then the separation that occurs uh, through yeah. that deceit. Yeah. And, and I think it's important then, you know, saying to that people, you know, may not believe in the evil one. That's probably what he wants. Yes. He oh, probably, yes. yeah. you know, yes. wants us to, to yeah. doubt him or not even pay much yes. attention to him. But, you know, I think that's all yeah. the more, you know, that's right. Important, you mm-hmm. know, placed That's on. Right. I think what is it is the armor of God. You know, the, is That's that right. Ephesians say like just put yeah. on your armor. You know, we have to be ready to stand. Yeah, and, you yeah. Know, fight those attacks. That's <laughs> right, and 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 not out of fear, but right. out of uh, alertness, as right. then Peter yeah. would say, right? <laughs> you know, be yeah. alert. I I remember when I wasn't alert, yeah. and I ended up denying Jesus. But please be alert. You know, the devil is yeah. prowling uh, like a lion, and. Um, C.S. Lewis, I think, though, you know, because we, we don't have to have fear. Uh, that, you know, we see what, what the Son of God has come to do. And, uh, you know, I think it was Lewis who said, you know, there are the two opposite, mm-hmm. uh, equal and opposite uh, views that we have about the devil and, and the demons. Right. Um, one is that we've, uh, we don't believe in their existence. Right. Mm-hmm. And then the second is that we do believe and we have an unhealthy um, over interest mm-hmm. in right. them. And that uh, Satan would be pleased with both of those. Yes. Um, and so I think um, really being on um, the offense with our growth with God is the same as being on the defense against Satan. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and I've heard yeah. it say that our sin is often our worst. The, our sin is usually the worst, we- or the, the greatest weapon that Satan has against us. He knows how to get in the door. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Screw tape letters, right? Back yeah. to C.S. Lewis again. Uh, but, um, well, good. Well, I do hope there's some conversation about that um, because it is, it is essential if, if we have to understand the fall um, and why we need Christ to begin with. We need to understand Satan's role in that. Right. Um, oh, that was wonderful. Thank you, yeah, Kelly, awesome. for coming to the table. Thank you for having yeah, me. Yeah, we look forward you. to having you back again. Uh, so, Dave, David, thanks again. Great to be here. Have this week. Now, you. next week, we're going to have Pastor Andrew Wild. All right. Uh, because he is going to be teaching this coming Sunday on the greatest trial of the centuries uh, in Luke 23. 